yes. Oh shit. Here we go again. Hello fellow mech warriors, Mage Leader here. Welcome back to another episode of the Battle Mech Primer, a series of text talks for people with really short attention spans. It's a beautiful day here aboard the Black Wisp with an outside temperature of a balmy absolute zero. The sunshine is dim and distant since we're multiple light years from the nearest star thanks to a badly calculated jump to a pirate point. Yeah, we're just a tiny bit stranded in deep space, but don't panic. We've sent out a general mayday and the local pirates have agreed to haul us back to port in exchange for our shipment of space rum. But Mage Leader, we aren't carrying any space rum. I know that, you know that. The pirates don't know that. And we'll keep it that way until they show up with their fully functional dropship grouped by half-starved and diseased scallywags. They should be here in a couple weeks. Meanwhile, I figured we could use our newfound free time to educate some of our newer members on the dangers of working in Mage Squadron. Besides getting stranded in the deep periphery, I mean. Today, we'll be looking at a mech that has been the bane of our existence since we first left Rosselhog and went mercenary. Today, we're discussing the Cicada. <laughs> Stop laughing, guys, I'm being serious. Look, I know the Cicada has something of a... reputation, but believe me, this is not a mech to be underestimated. So what is it about the Cicada that makes it so dangerous? Well, to understand that, we've got to once again head back to the days of the Star League. The Cicada was designed by Hartford Co. Industries and produced in 2740. At the time, the Star League was at its peak, and the SLDF was spread out across the entire inner sphere, actively engaged in border conflicts and peacekeeping operations. Mech designs had gone through their awkward phase and become refined feats of engineering. That one didn't age quite so well. And companies like GM and Bergen Industries were dominating the market and making absolute bank. Hartford Co. had seen the profit margin soaring, and decided that they wanted a piece of the action. There was just one problem. They didn't have any experience with mech building. In fact, they didn't have experience with anything even remotely similar to battle mech production. Up until this point, Hartford Co. was a producer of targeting computers and comms equipment with an active base in the civilian market. They'd never wound a Mimer bundle, never designed a precision limb, or even calibrated a gyro stabilizer. Their factories didn't have the tooling to produce components, and the sheer amount of investment required to begin the project was, frankly, astronomical. But the promise of fat stacks of cash was too tempting to resist, and so they went ahead with the design process. They focused all their efforts onto building a single factory, and took aim at the mech design with the least competition, the light mech. You see, up until this point, the light mech market was essentially a monopoly. Many companies had tried to make good lightweight machines, but the undisputed king of the scouts was Bergen. And they'd been on top ever since they put out the Locust design in 2499. That's just under two and a half centuries of dominance, and no one was crazy enough to try and challenge the status quo. Well, nobody who knew anything about building mechs, anyway. But Hartford Co. was a fresh face, and they had the advantage of an outside perspective. If all this is sounding a bit familiar, then congratulations. You've been paying attention in my ancient Terran history class. Hartford Co. decided not to compete with the Locusts directly. After all, copying a successful design would just turn them into a cheap knockoff brand. They wanted to provide an improvement on the Locust concept, and what they came up with was certainly unique. They built a 40-ton machine, technically making it a medium mech, 
used the extra tonnage for additional weapon mounts, but kept the speed of a light mech. The Cicada has a top speed of 129.6 kph, which is shockingly fast for a mech that size, and every bit as fast as a Locust. It boasts higher firepower, but the same amount of armor. The default configuration was the CDA-2A, which mounted two medium lasers and one small laser. Okay, so it's not the most impressive loadout in the world, and early models had defective heat sinks, but for a light mech, it's a lot. Hartford Co. submitted the design to the SLDF for testing. At first, the officials were unimpressed. A 40-tonner with such a light loadout is hardly worth any investment. But then the test pilot cranked up the throttle. The Cicada blazed through the test course like a bat out of hell, laying waste of virtually everything in its path. No one had ever seen a medium mech move like that before, and the SLDF agreed to pick up the design to supplement its aging force of locusts. Against all odds, Hartford Co. had done it. The crazy bastards had gone from computer makers to mech producers, and they made... a moderate profit. Yeah, after all that, they weren't exactly rolling in dough. The initial models had heat management issues, and local commanders had no idea how to use the things. They weren't popular and had a reputation for drawing more fire than they could withstand. Commanders would often treat them like medium mechs, placing them in environments they couldn't really handle. Hartford Co. ended up producing more cicadas than they could sell, and a massive stockpile of the machines sat gathering dust in a warehouse on Bryant. When the First Succession War began, the factory on Bryant was destroyed, and production ceased entirely. And while that would normally be the end of the story, the strange tale of the cicada is just getting warmed up. The warehouse was raided multiple times by every great house as they became increasingly desperate for mechs, and the design spread out across the inner sphere. It was thrown into battles it was never meant for, loaded with weapons it should never have carried, and all this desperate modification in the chaos of Total War began to reveal one of the Cicada's greatest strengths. You can strap anything onto it. There are Cicadas with autocannons, PPCs, lasers, missiles, flamethrowers, machine guns, and virtually everything in between. It's a machine with a speed of a light that can mount the weapons of an assault. You know how the urban mech mounts an AC-20 and can be terrifying in the right environment? Well, imagine if an urban mech could run at highway speed and you get an idea of what the Cicada can do. Of course, it isn't heavily armed or armored enough for frontline combat, but it's managed to find itself in a more specific role. Today, the Cicada is best used as a light mech killer and harasser. It's fast enough to keep up with even the fastest lights and can outright chase down the slower ones. If you're in a panther, you can kiss your ass goodbye, because it packs enough firepower to send scouts to the Shadow Realm. Now do you see why we need to take this thing seriously? When you start taking on missions with us, you're going to be driving ravens or locusts, and the Cicada is a machine that excels at killing you. It's the reason we keep Griffins and Orions on standby, and you're going to need to know how to deal with one should you encounter it in the field. If you meet a Cicada, the first thing you need to do is coordinate with your lance mates. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, you'll be at a disadvantage. Draw its fire and send someone behind it. Its arms are forward-facing only, so it has a blind spot in the rear. If you get cut off from your lance and have one breathing down your neck, say a prayer to remain calm, and focus all your fire on the side torsos. Virtually all of its armor is on the CT, so with a little luck and accurate shooting, you can destroy its weapons and leave it vulnerable. If it's armed with flamers, then just run like hell. Don't fire at it unless you want to overload your reactor. So, that's the Cicada. At first glance, it's just an oversized locust for double the price, but at the right hands, it can be a terrifying opponent. Mage Squadron has lost many good pilots to these things, and we know firsthand that you should never underestimate it. It might not rock your world, but it can certainly ruin your day. Thank you all for your patience. It's been a while since I put one of these out, I know, but I'm finally back on track somewhat. Now that I'm finally over that cold that's been pestering me for the past week or so, I can finally mostly get myself back on track. Don't worry, I've got a lot more of these in the pipeline, and your feedback has been greatly appreciated, and it has not been ignored. The next video I think a lot of you are definitely going to like. Until next time, this is Mage Leader, signing off.